One day, three guest women came to a classroom comprising children between five and seven years. The first woman tells the children. This afternoon, we are going to draw pictures of people doing jobs. And the first we will draw is that of a firefighter. All the children happily settle down to draw. Mine is a firefighter, Gary, says one. This is firefighter Stan. This is Simon. He is very strong say others. And it goes on. Next, we are going to draw a surgeon, says the second woman. Again, a happy and hectic activity. What is the name of this surgeon? asks the woman to one child. This is Jim Bob. He is a brain surgeon, says one. He gives medicines, says another. Next, we are going to draw a fighter pilot, says the third woman. One child draws a fighter plane and says, This is Mr. X. He rescues people. And so on. Now we will meet these people for real, says the women. There's a cheerful, yes, from all. The three women go and come back as firefighter, surgeon and fighter pilot. There's an incredible gasp jaws wide open, faces with diverse expressions when the children look at all the three. They still don't believe it. Faye, they are all dressed up, they shout. The first woman introduces herself as a surgeon. The second introduces herself as a fighter pilot. And the third as a firefighter. The final count of the drawings by children 61 pictures drawn were that of men in these roles, and five as women. So what have we learned from this story? Gender stereotypes are defined between the ages of five to seven. To remove these stereotyping, parents, teachers, and other social agencies can teach their children to be androgynous, a person who may at will engage in both masculine or feminine behaviors and tasks as seen by society. A person who focuses less on culturally built behaviors for males and females, and rather focuses more on a behavior that is more operative under the given situations. Isn't it time we redraw the balance? Sairam.